Hi, I'm Harry Rock, and welcome to another edition of the Westfield Council on Aging Presents. This is a special collaborative program between Pete Coles, producer and chief engineer of WCPC Westfield Cable Channel 15, and Tina Gorman, executive director of the Westfield Senior Center. Our topic today is eating healthy on a budget. And with inflation having affected everybody's budgets, I think this is a very appropriate topic. In the studio today with me, my guest is Jen Jafune, who is a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist. Jen, thrilled to have you on the show. You've been here before with Tina Gorman on Wake Up Wednesday, so you're no, you're no stranger to this studio. That is correct. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, inflation is definitely out of control right now. Food costs are going up. I know that I do all the shopping. I go every morning. I, I, I'm sorry, every Monday morning I go to uh, Big Y to do my shopping, and I've seen yep. a certain uh, definite increase in prices. Uh, you were just relating a story to me off air just before we went live on this about a recent shopping experience you had. Can you want to elaborate on that? Absolutely. So... I'm one of those people who tries not to go to the store in between my regular shop uh, time, and yet I find myself, I need like two or three things. Sure. And in the old days, I would run into the store and not just buy my two or three things, I would buy a bag full of food, 25 to $50. And I this morning was at the store same situation, needed two or three things, $87. Oh, my gosh. And, um, you know, I needed these items, so I spent the money. But it's a big jump. And, you know, I'm not going to say that six months ago it was $50. It probably was higher than that. But this was an all-time high for just right. one bag of food. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, it is shocking to see the increase. And I, it's just myself and my wife, Ann, uh, and I've definitely seen our weekly food budget go up. You know, my Absolutely. question that I, you know, I was thinking about this is with food costs definitely going up and a lot of our seniors who are on a fixed income, they're, they're going in with the same amount of money that they have. Costs have gone up, which means right. they've got to buy less in order to keep it within the budget that they have. What what are their options, and how difficult is it to purchase food and still be able to eat healthy within the budget that they are confined to? Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down. Um, first of all, I don't think you need to buy less, but you may need to buy differently. Ah. Okay. So, for example, um, maybe instead of having one or two of your chicken or beef or pork meals this week, you make a lentil soup. Mm. So I brought my bag of lentils. I know, you've got all, all so, kind of show-and-tell items. Yeah, here. you can't really read this. It, I had to bring what I had at home. But these are dry lentils. And I can buy a bag of this for less than $2.00. And this will make, this whole bag would feed my husband and I for two weeks. I mean, oh, wow. it, it for $2. needs expand. And wow. so instead of making a chicken stew, I made a lentil stew. Hmm. And instead of making um, a meat sauce, I made a, a mushroom and bean sauce. Okay. So, you know, I, I recently bought a package of chicken and it cost me like $9 and that had four to six pieces in it, and that fed four to six people. Wow. Um, but the beans will cover many more meals than that. Sure. And provide nutrients that you need, like the protein that not just anyone, but seniors in particular tend to not get enough protein. But that's a huge cost savings. Mm -hmm. uh, it just happens to be a more plant-based option. And some people find um, that concept of buying dried peas and beans a little overwhelming because lentils cook up pretty quickly but if you buy like dry kidney beans or dry cannellis black beans it's a soaking period a cooking period mm. and it it overwhelms people so I also brought I have canned beans now normally um, I would suggest to people to get canned no salt added if they have heart disease issues or low sodium 
um, because these tend to be super high in sodium compared to the dry. The dry have about 10 milligrams of sodium. These have about 350. Okay. And so there is a big difference. Mm. Um, but this is a simple, quick, easy way to get a meal. Mm. Um, so, so you can cook them up quickly have yeah. the same nutritional value These without even, putting a lot of yeah, work you, into it. Right. It's just heat and serve. Okay. So that, that's, I put my hand up for that one. Right. I like that. But they're quick. They're easy. They're less expensive. So you could consider shopping differently. So you, you're still using the same amount of money. You're still meeting nutritional needs. Okay. But you're doing it within the confines of how much food costs right now. Right. So that's part one. Part two is... And this is a hard argument for people to swallow, but I would rather spend money on food than on another medication for a health issue. Mm. So it's cheap to buy some unhealthy foods. You know, you can buy a pound of bologna for a lot less than you can get your chicken breast mm. or your lentils. Well, the lentils and bologna probably are comparable, <laughs> but... Um, you know, if you eat unhealthy foods that are high in fat, high in sodium, don't offer much nutritional value, and you then get your cholesterol, your blood sugar, whatever issues checked, if you wind up on another med, then you're paying for more doctor visits, mm. more testing, more um, medications. That's a great point. And so, you know... Overall, I'd rather spend my money on food than medication. Plus, food tastes good and has no side effects, <laughs> and medications can have side side effects um, and impact your body in a negative. Right. I mean, they, they can still help you, but you know, sometimes they have issues with taking them. Whereas, I'm happy to just eat my food. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, no, that's so, a, that's a great. It's a tough argument, though, when you're at the cash register. It is a tough argument. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you too, um, because of food rising, food costs going up, are people able to, or should people really be thinking of taking advantage of sales and coupons out there oh. that they might not have thought about before? And I'm, yeah, I will say that I am the last one. I don't even look at coupons. I just take food off the shelf. I don't even look at the price of it. I just know that when I get to the end, oh, boy, this week is a lot higher than last week. And I'm buying basically all the same food. But I right. don't even look at the ways to save or, or shop wisely. Right. So there's a couple of things. One is there's nothing wrong with buying generic. Um, okay. Generic Great point. foods are made by the manufacturers that are the brand names they're selling it to Kirkland at, or Big Y or whoever, uh, and they just slap on a different label. Is it it's the same food? It is. It is. So one, one time I was like, you know, I don't eat a lot of mayonnaise, but I'm making something. I need a little mayonnaise, and I really only like Hellman's. And I called Big Y Mayonnaise to find out who made their mayonnaise, and at the time it was Hellman's. Oh. So I bought Big Y and saved two dollars off the jar. Oh wow! So you know, there's nothing wrong with buying generic. Hmm. Um, you can also buy things in bulk. So um, you know, per unit price, if you buy something in a larger container, it usually is less expensive. So for example, I bought popcorn in bulk, but I didn't want to keep this gigantic thing in my pantry so i just put a smaller container filled those kept one in my pantry up in the kitchen area and moved the rest of it down into my cellar where i have another pantry but you can also split it with people so if you have three or oh, four friends a as a senior right. you know you split the cost of um the food three four five ways you get a a decent sized portion but not one that's going to last for the next six years um and you can save money that way i do have to say i'm not the best at coupons i used to be a coupon person and i just fell out of it but in this day and age it's not a bad idea to look and see what what coupons are available the problem is and this is why i stopped doing it is i started shopping for the coupon, the food that the coupons were, and they weren't necessarily my foods that I wanted to use, but because they were on 
uh, a coupon. Right. I was buying them. Right. So the, you know, the way to get around that is make your menu first. And I I strongly believe in planning out your week. And then if there's a coupon that matches that menu, then I would suggest you use it. Because that way you're still sticking with your foods. Right. And the coupon may enhance the shopping experience and lower the price. I will, though, say I do shop sales. So if I walk into the store, so, for example, I brought a name brand crushed tomato product okay okay normally it's it's much more expensive and i would not buy this but it was a i believe it was a buy one get one kind of deal sure and when i looked at the pricing for two it was comparable to what i normally bought which was you know i'm sure it's a generic uh so i wound up with this one because it was a better sale price but i will tend to buy my foods uh, for what I need, but if there's a sale version, uh, I'll go for it because we every penny counts. It, it really does. Um, yeah, I want to elaborate quickly on the popcorn example. Yeah. I, I never honestly ever thought about that, but the idea of buying a big container of something, but you don't have room in your pantry. So if I'm in the grocery store saying, I'm saying to myself, well, I don't have room for that, so I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to buy the little one. That's going to fit well. But this idea, especially if it's something that you can portion out. Now, if it's a huge, like, bottle of peanut butter, that's not going to work so well. But certainly something that's easy, like uh, popcorn or or, or items of that nature. Right. Although I'll disagree about the peanut butter. Oh, really? Okay. I'm here to hear. Because, you know, peanut butter, so we buy natural peanut butter. I, I like it because less processing and um, no added salt, no added sugars. I don't like mixing peanut butter in the container and getting it all over my arm because you need to do that to get all the way to the bottom. So you can take peanut butter out of the jar, put it in a flat square uh, like Tupperware kind of container and oh, stir it that way. Okay. So even a gigantic jar of peanut butter – if you dump you it out still, and divide it, you could still oh, you share still it with do. someone. Okay, great point. And then you can just leave it in the container if you want. Right. Or put it back in the jar. Yeah. So great point. So there are ways to get around that. Yeah. Just uh, be creative in how you package it and right. how you store it. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. You know, I wanted to ask you, are certain grocery stores more affordable than others? Or really are they all in the same kind of ballpark when it comes to pricing? It's a good question. So I happen to know there are people who are big Y shoppers. There are people who are stop and shop shoppers. <laughs> there are people who will, Loyalty. Yeah. They'll only go to Aldi's or they only get meat at big Y, but they get produce at price oh, yeah, chopper. Sure, right. You know, um, I know people who will drive to Target and um, there's a meat outlet in Springfield called... Uh, uh, shoot 99 uh 90 meat outlet on avocado street and they'll drive all over creation to get the less expensive items i happen to not do that because i don't want to spend the money on the gas i know i was just thinking about that just yeah. the gas alone is robbing you of the right. savings it i think it really depends i mean there are less expensive um products at Aldi, there's less expensive brand stop and shop brand stuff, less expensive big Y brand stuff. We as a society tend to eat the same thing 70% of the time. So once you find where you can get the less expensive foods that you like to have, if you stick with that, I think that's your best bet. Other people, you know, you can get a discount card and go to the the big box um, discount places like Costco or BJ's. I used to do that when I had kids at home, mm-hmm. but I have a hard time getting an, you know, a package of anything enough to feed an army at this point, because, you know, yes, I could split that with neighbors or friends, but it's still a lot of food. So I've given up on those 
places for the most part, but I still have people who swear by it. Mm -hmm. I think it's where you're comfortable. I I go where it's most convenient personally. Mm. And from my house, I can walk down the rail trail if I want to go to the store. I could go from my office, which is in the center of town, and I have equal access to Big Y and Stop and Shop. Mm. So I find those are helpful. I don't tend to go to the mall very often, but Target also has a lot of less expensive food. So if Mm. you're up at the mall getting a new shirt or pants or whatever, it's not a bad idea to stop in there as well. Hmm. That's a great point. I I know that uh, people go to, um, uh, all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank on it, uh, Walmart. Oh, Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot Walmart. Yes. Um, I I don't shop there often, but you can get um, less expensive foods there, uh, particularly because they have a greater buying power. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, if you're going to buy a cross-country load of food and then sell it at your individual stores, you obviously can sell it for less. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a bad place when you're on a really tight budget. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, you know, people like to go to restaurants, uh, periodically. So, does that really, you know, and I'm, you know, restaurants are passing on food increases as well. They have to. They have to. They have to to stay so in business. It, what is this doing to people's food budget when they're going? Do they now have to start thinking about going to going out to eat less often than they did before in order to stay within their budget and just eating at home more? It costs more to eat out. Period. It costs more than it used to. Also, period, because it costs the restaurants more to buy their foods. They're, they're not um, exempt from the price increases. They have price increases themselves, plus they have to pay for their staff and their fixed costs, like the building and things like that. So what that's what we're paying for, the convenience of having them do everything for us. Mm-hmm. So, yes, um, I think that people, well, in general, I think people should eat out less because we, as a society, used to eat out a lot less. Mm. Um, I think back to when I was a kid, so uh, early 70s, um, late, we went out to eat maybe as a family once a quarter, if that. Oh, wow. And okay. that was a big deal. Yeah, you know, as a kid, I don't. Actually, I don't remember ever going out to eat. I think we always ate yeah, home yeah. we didn't have the money. Oh, and, and my mom always cooked dinner or right. my dad. Um, and there was a lot less fast food. I mean, yeah, it was true. like a huge deal to right. go to a McDonald's. Right. Like, that was pretty special. That was so big. Like, right. oh, my gosh. We're, yeah, I mean, we didn't do it everything. very often because there wasn't one near us. I mean, imagine saying that now. But in my hometown, there wasn't anything like that. There were no fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. Um, But it, number one, we go out more as a society. Number two, it costs more. Right. And number three, it's not as nutritious. So um, restaurant foods, even not just fast food places, but regular restaurants, the portion sizes are usually much larger than you would serve yourself at home. That's and true. the fat, sodium, carbs, they're they're all higher when you're eating out. So you just have to you have to be smart. You have to make a decision and say, am I going out because it's some kind of special event or am I going out of convenience? If you're going because you are going for convenience, you may want to rethink that and do it less mm-hmm. just to save a little money so that um it's easier to manage your budget because, you know, getting one chicken dinner at a restaurant with mm. a pile of rice and some veggies is going to cost you, I don't know, ten, twenty dollars depends on where you're going. Probably more than that, or more than that. Right. You know, at home, at least twenty or more. You know, I can buy that pack of chicken for now seven to nine dollars, yeah. but I can feed four people with that. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a the huge cost difference. Of going out. Plus. You've got taxes, you've got tips, yep. uh, and, uh, you know, I, I know that we are far more generous now f- COVID, post-COVID with tips than we were before, and we were always right. doing a pretty good job of taking care of them, but now we really do, so that adds on to the price. It does, and, you know, it's funny that you brought that up, but 
we as a as a community were homebound for basically two and right. a half three years right it's nice to get out <laughs> it really is i will say personally i would rather spend money and go to a fancy restaurant once in a blue moon than go to a less fancy place on a weekly basis mm. so i don't mind waiting um to do that you know, kind of saving up. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, what What is your thought on the processed foods, the prepared foods? Like you can go to Big Y or you have a lot of places now that that's basically sell dinners and, and food items that are already cooked. All you have to do is warm them up. You just buy them, bring them home, right. and you don't have to cook. You've already, you're basically buying them pre-cooked. What is right. your thought on that type of food? I. I have a few thoughts about that. First of all, um, they tend to be higher in sodium okay. because they do have to be preserved in case you're not having them right away. Okay. And anytime you can walk out of a store, any supermarket, and pretty much eat that meal right away, you know, pull off a top and start eating the soup out of the can right. in the car because you're starved. Um, anytime you do that, it's going to be significantly higher in sodium. So that's one thing to consider. It will also most likely be higher in fat and calories than if you had made it yourself. So it it is something to consider. I understand the concept of wanting convenient foods, easy, ready to go, but it's it's more expensive. It may seem less expensive to buy a ready-made chicken dinner I, I keep using chicken as the example it could be f- you know a right. fish dinner it could be beef um, but if you look at the per unit price hmm. it's so much less expensive to do it yourself because I buy one one protein vegetable and a uh, starch already made can pop it in my oven or microwave and that's costing me I don't you know, five, ten dollars. Mm-hmm. But again, I can buy a package of chicken, a bag of frozen broccoli, and a bag of potatoes, and that's gonna feed me for depending on how many people are at my house, five to seven days, mm. and it's gonna be almost a comparable price. There are also, you know, taking that one step further, there are those companies that uh, you can join, and they send you a meal kit, and you just have to follow the instructions. Everything's cut, and everything's seasoned, and it's ready to go. Um, they're hugely convenient, but again, higher in sodium. Mm. They they do have some that are lower fat versions, so that's a plus. But the cost of that meal is going to be higher than if you bought the individual component parts and made mm. it yourself. You know, that's a great point. And I, I guess what you have to remind yourself is that these stores are in business to make money. They are. They so are. they're not looking at a charity. They're not a, they're not a, a, a meal service, you know, for... They're a business. Just, they're a business. They're trying to make is get a decent profit out of what they're doing. So right. there's no question that they're going to be more expensive. There is something people don't, uh, most people don't take advantage of. And, and it's called unit pricing. So if you look at the little tag underneath something, mm-hmm. it'll say, you know, this the product is $8. Mm-hmm. But it's going to give you a per unit price. So it might be 0.4 cents right. per pound or whatever it is. Right. And if you take that one product and look at the different sizes available, you'll find that that per unit price changes. So sometimes it's more economical to buy the bigger or smaller version oh, of sure. it right. because you're paying less for right. that per unit. Per price, unit. Right. And it, most people think that the bigger you get it, the lower the per unit price. And every once in a while, I'm surprised by it, and it it's more. Mm-hmm. I, I can't explain it, but it's more. So you've really got to do your homework so to look at that. Sometimes, it, you know, right. I'm, I'm the kind of person who loves being in a grocery store. <laughs> I can spend hours in a grocery store walking around, looking at new foods, wanting to try things. And I do. I buy things to try them because if I'm going to refer someone to a food item or recommend something to a, a population, I need to know what it tastes like. 
Hmm. So I, I'm often buying these new food items. 10,000 new food items come out a year. Not all of them come wow. to our area, but across the country, there are 10,000 wow. new food items in a year. Um, somebody's got to taste them and see if they taste okay. Hmm. And, and I know it's subjective. I can taste things and go, well, it's not really my thing, but it would be a great food item for someone who needs to watch their sodium or lower their blood sugar. So, you know, I do that. But that's because I'm a dietitian and I'm in business and I want my people to have the options. Right, right. You know, one of the things, and COVID, COVID has caused this. We are a society, unlike other countries, we're a society that when you go into the grocery store, you expect to see the shelves always full. Yes. And always full of what you want to have. Right. And what, and of course, I do the shopping in our family, and what I've discovered is even now I go in, and while the shelves are much fuller than they were, I don't always find the stuff that I'm going in looking for every right. week. So I start buying extra of certain items that I know periodically they won't have. Right. And it'll overbuy and we'll just store it because I know that happened to me even this week where I went in and I said, oh, gee, they don't have this this week. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got enough at home that'll carry me through. Hopefully I'll be able to pick it up, you know, the following week. Yep. Uh, but when people go in, they're not finding what they're looking for. So right. now they've got to go into alternatives because they still need that food item. Right. I'm the queen of make do. So if I can't get or use for some reason a certain product, it's it's not on the shelf and you're right, it's it's still happening or you know, if there's a food allergy and I can't use a particular food item, I immediately look up what are the replacements for this. And I get three, four, ten options. So I believe in being flexible because we don't have a choice. Mm. We can complain that we can't get product X or we can go, well, I can't get product X, but you know what? I can have these things. Mm. So, you know, an example I can give is... Um, one of the food items that are less expensive that I didn't bring a sample of, nonfat dry milk powder. So mm. nonfat dry milk powder does not taste good mixed up as milk. It just, I'm, I would never drink a, a glass of it, but you can cook with it. So if you oh, need milk in a right. recipe, number one, it's dry, so it's not going to go bad. Number two, you can keep it for months and months and months in the dry form, mm. so I don't have to worry about it running out. Um, so it's, it's a great food product. But we now have a milk allergy at our house, so mm. what can I use in place of that? Mm. So, you know, you got to find options. And I did. I found a dried coconut milk option. I've heard people talking about coconut milk. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan, but if there's a couple of things that I would really like to have some dry milk powder for, because okay. I have found it to be successful. Right. And so I had to find a, a substitute. But I know what you mean about not finding things on the shelves, because that's happened to me as well. And just like everybody else, we must eat the same thing 70% of the time. And, right. and when they don't have that item, right. I've got to find the substitutes. And then I have to think, well, which is my less expensive version? Mm. So then you, you got to do a little extra step there, right. not just find a substitute, right. but find one that isn't going to cost you 10 times what you would normally pay for the original thing you were looking for. Right. right. That's a great point. <laughs> Again, I am so guilty of I just don't even look at the prices. I just grab it. I go I'll throw it. In there. It's, it's going to cost me no matter what. I, know, I, I need to do a better job of that. In some cases, we have preferences just like everyone else. I will buy the more expensive item because that's our preference. Whether it's a taste preference or a health consequence, mm. sometimes you do need to spend the money for that item. And... Um, yeah, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. You know, another area that people really should be aware of, and I know we get in trouble with this because it's just the two of us, um, 
but is really looking at expiration dates. And, yes. you know, when I first took over, when I first retired six years ago, I, uh, and because I traveled a lot, if, if Ann didn't go shopping, we would never have food in the house because I was always on the road. Uh, but now I do all the shopping. And so I used to just grab stuff and I never looked. Right. Now I've smartened up because I'm really looking and I'll reach in the back of the shelf because I know that's where they load all the new items in and, and get the fresher items because I'm always looking. When is this expiring? Is this expiring in two or three days? Or, right. you know, fish, lettuce, uh, you know, a lot of your uh, um, items that are not permanent uh, right. uh, items. You've got to really think about that so that I know that they're going to last, uh, you know, through the week. Right. And if we're away for a day or two, then they're lasting into the following week. The other issue that we have is that sometimes we, we just don't eat it all. Right. And so then we end up having to throw it away. And that's always disconcerting to me because I'm like, oh, that's putting a match to money. Well, a couple of things. Um First of all, I'm a big fan of if I need something for the next couple of days, I'm okay with getting something that's close to the expiration because I have found that, you know, they'll slap a just for today sale oh, sticker sure, on right. a meat. If package, you're going to use it, right. If I'm going to use it. Right. So, um, you know, I will look at those because. Mm-hmm. I, I do a lot with um, ground chicken breast and ground turkey breast. And, uh, you know, to get those on sale because they're going to expire in the next couple of days, I know I'm going to be cooking them mm-hmm. tonight or tomorrow, then great. Or I can pop them in my freezer. Mm-hmm. So um, I take advantage of those close expiration dates because it's less expensive. Right. And you can you also have to pay attention to that on um, canned goods. So in the back of most stores or back corner sides, uh, there are the shelves that are the, you know, soon to expire mm-hmm. discount items. I always look there because there may be something that oh, I need point. and point. it's less expensive. Right. I also during the um, warmer months when the farm stands were open, um, they often have a section where it's the produce that, you know, is right. on the verge of going. I'm always looking there first because I like to buy seasonal. You know, I brought some seasonal produce for you to see because okay. they're less expensive right now. And if I can grab some of this stuff, super high in nutrition, um, less expensive than some of the produce that I was eating back in June, hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll do that because it'll save me some money. And with that stuff that there's too much of it, I will try my best. I'm not always the best at this, but to process it. So let me show you. I brought another example. I, I participate in a farm share, and oh, they yeah, sure. give you more stuff than you could ever use. So these are peppers so there's some um varying levels of hot peppers and i dehydrated all of these okay and i am going to put them in a mini chopper and make hot pepper flakes and give those out as gifts uh, over the holidays oh wow i did it last year i'm gonna do it again this year and um or birthdays i mean for anything everybody i know eats hot food i'm the only one who is plain jane (laughs) but when i have an abundance i try to process somehow um my best example is we grew zucchini this summer and i have a farm share my husband wanted to grow zucchini okay we'll grow zucchini (laughs) two plants i had so much zucchini i can't even tell you I shredded and froze it. I made zucchini bread, zucchini muffins, oh, yeah, zucchini sure. this, zucchini right. that. But, you know, when I ran out of space and lost interest in the taste of zucchini for a very long time, <laughs> I donated it. So I okay. went down to um, the uh, food pantry and I went down to the homeless shelter oh. and I brought them food. Oh, because yeah. oh, what a great I don't idea. want to throw it away. Right, I want right. people to consume it. Right. So if you have stuff that you're not going to be using that the expiration date's coming up, donate it. Mm. Just don't don't let it go bad. I mean, 
just like the rest of the world, I throw away more food than I probably should. But I found that it feels good to donate. Yes. And so I do right. it. I love it. Yep. Uh, can you, you had you brought in some uh, items up there, the uh, consumables. Uh, can you yep. just go over those again? Just what, okay. what did you what did you bring in so, so people could this see is, exactly what you? Sorry, got? this is a butternut squash. Okay. And um, it's a great source of vitamin A, and it has some fiber in it, so I love it. Oh. And um, I love butternut squash. I'll roast right. it. I'll mash it. I've got a fantastic. Um, butternut squash soup recipe so oh, wow. we can make it and and have that regularly also a good source of vitamin a and seasonal right now are sweet potatoes okay also some people call them yams i technically don't know the difference but i'm potatoes, sure there's right. a reason and again roast mash yep. pan cook whatever so these are two favorites of mine this is a new favorite of mine, less, less familiar to most people. It's called a delicata squash. What's nice about this huh. is you can eat the skin. So you I can eat the skin. I thought that was a gourd or something. Yeah. Wow. It, you can eat the skin of this unlike really? any other squash, that, you know, like wintry squash. Right. Um, and they're delicious. Hmm. And so I, I roast them, and we just eat them with a little fake butter on it because we have no dairy at our house i also brought in potatoes and apples again seasonal foods and so i mean there's a million things you can do with potatoes there's a million things you can do with apples um, potatoes are an excellent source of vitamin c they've gotten a bad rap over the years because they are carbs but they're fiber there's vitamin c their whole, you know, mm. if you keep the skin on, they count as like a whole grain kind of food. Oh, wow. um, and they're very filling and they're a, a less expensive uh, version of a starch for your plate. And then there's apples. I'm a huge fan of apples. They're great this season. I don't know what about the growing season, but I have found that they are better this year than I think they've been in a couple of years. I'll make homemade applesauce, which is much less expensive than buying it at the store, and I can regulate the amount of sugar in it, and it really only takes 15 minutes. Mm. I mean, people think it takes forever, but it, it really doesn't. Um, I, I microwave apples and sprinkle on a little cinnamon, throw in a couple of raisins, call it a baked apple. It's a oh. cheap, easy snack. That's it's a great sweet. idea. Right. Um, so, you know, I'm a big fan of apples. And then the last thing is this this is a spaghetti squash it's a small one but spaghetti squash yeah I've so never heard of that you slice it um and you face put it face down on a pan you roast it and um when it's done it's because you can stick a fork through it easily and you take the sides open you grab a fork and you just drag it through and it looks like spaghetti <laughs> So it's a great substitute right? for pasta. Wow. And so if you're looking for something different, and it's seasonal, so it's a... Can you buy those in a grocery store? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah you, you, there's a lot bigger ones. They they gave us this size at my farm share, but um, yeah, they're right at the supermarket. What, what I, I'm just curious. What is your thought? I... I we live on the north side of Westfield, so uh, we're near Kaczynski's. They do a farm share yep. down the other corner. Uh, there's another little Yellowstone farm. farm. Yellowstone farm. Yeah, yep. that's where I'm I go. Right in between the two yeah. of them. Um, they have a farm share. W what is your thought? And we've never taken, we go in and we buy right. items as we need it, but we've never done the farm share. What is your thought on farm share? And is that a great way for people to go in the summer? Yeah, so... I just started doing this. Um, this was my second summer that I did it. And I did the um, every other week farm share because, and, and still there's more food than we can eat that way. Oh, every other week. Yes. Yeah, okay. So you can go every week or you can go every other okay. week. Oh, I didn't realize um, that. And I joined the winter farm share where you go like once a month. And, and they have stuff through the winter. Well, that I got all of the root vegetables oh and the, the that squashes right? that I showed I you. Know. I thought they were just summer. Yep. Um, well, not every place does does oh. a winter, but the place I go to, the Yellowstone um, Farmhouse, does. Yep. 
Um, That's on the corner of North Road and Root Road. Yes. And it's organic, so I know there's no chemicals. So if that's important to you um, to shop organic, uh, then that's a plus. It's seasonal. So buying seasonal foods mean that means that you're getting the nutrients um, mm. more quickly than if you are buying things that are shipped from Venezuela or California. Sure. They're here ready and here you go. Um, I find it's enjoyable to go out and pick, you know, sometimes they have pick your own. So I've picked green beans and I've picked blackberries oh, yeah, sure. and raspberries. They even have flowers, which to me is the best part because <laughs> um, I love flowers. But I'm, I'm really trying hard um, to do seasonal eating because it is better for the body. Less, you know, mm. it's it's what's around based on the weather and where you live it seems appropriate to consume the foods available at that time to me mm -hmm. and they're nutritious so i brought a couple of books you have such good um Great. questions um that i use this is an old favorite um called putting food by and it talks about how to preserve food and um you can freeze, you can can, you can dry. And I used to be terrified about canning, and my husband grew up with it, and I didn't. And he, <laughs> he taught me how to can. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, it's not as hard as people think. And if you can buy things in season so they're less expensive and preserve it for periods okay. of time, sure. it'll save money on the budget. I also have another book that, this is falling apart, but... The well ball, used. Yes, the Ball uh, Canning book. And so this is all about canning foods, okay. but very easy to follow. And again, I really was intimidated. I will tell you that I prefer to freeze things because mm -hmm. it's easy, um, but canning also is a good thing. And just like the rest of the world, during COVID, I did some purchasing that I would not have normally done, and I bought a dehydrator, hmm. and that's how I made the peppers that I okay. showed you. Yeah, sure. And I've dehydrated other things, like when pears were in season, I dehydrated some of those, oh, wow. and apples, things like that, because when they're dried, they last longer. Hmm. So seasonal, less expensive. Um, nutritious and will last a little longer so i did those and this is a favorite cookbook of mine called simply in season hmm. and simply in season divides the book up by season and there are recipes specific to what's available in spring or fall oh, or winter it. or summer and um it, it's great um, and it saves me money by buying these seasonal foods. Right. Oh, that, that's really fascinating. You know, what, what I want to ask you, uh, there's a new trend now, this online shopping. I think Stop It Shop does Peapod or oh, something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. And I think a lot of the stores are starting to do that. What is your thought on online shopping? Because it's easy for seniors to call right. in or send it, and they don't have to pick it up. It gets delivered to them. I, I haven't tried it myself, so I'm not sure exactly how it works, but can people find what it is that they're looking for? Does it restrict the choices that they have? Does it give them the availability of looking price-wise at one item, item A being a little bit less expensive than item B? Do they have that kind of freedom when they're doing online shopping? So it's a great question. Um, I was unfamiliar with this until COVID hit my house. And... Mm. Um, so my husband got COVID in the early days of the COVID outbreak, and it's a very frightening time. And I, you know, we were sure. quarantined. Right. So we needed food. So I looked into how to do that. Mm. It's so easy. It's so easy. And to it, it's, I would say for the normal person, it would save them time. I spent more than an hour <laughs> every time because you can, you can price compare, you can look at Is every, right? wow. oh yeah, it's, it's their entire store basically online. Wow. Wow. So you can pick and choose what you want. And 
it was fascinating to me, and I really enjoyed doing that. So, you know, number one, I didn't have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. Number two, somebody brought it to my door. Mm -hmm. It was fantastically convenient. Um, So that's the plus side. The negative side is there are fees associated with it. Oh, so okay. yeah, they gotta you know, pay for it. There's there's a delivery fee. Hmm. Plus, you need to tip the person who's doing the shopping for oh, you. Great point. And I really believe in doing that, and I don't believe in in minimizing that because you know what, they're doing all the work. Um, and I found they're really they were really good. So I would get a text message that says. I couldn't find X. Oh, Here's really? four options. Which one do you want? Really? And so I then could pick what I wanted. Oh or I gosh. could say, don't bother. I don't want a substitute. And they would just pull it off. Oh, my gosh. So wow. that, you know, they worked hard for their money. And and they could. you could also pay extra to have them do it more quickly. So, um, you know... That's the downside. The other side about it is, you know, I'm not there looking at the apples going, which one's the best one Mm -hmm. for me? I'm letting someone else decide what's the best choice. And I would have to say 90% of the time I felt like I got really good choices. But if it was a food they were unfamiliar with, I didn't always get the best Mm -hmm. um, looking products. So that's a good point, right? You know, sometimes because being a dietitian and being open to trying new things, new recipes, new whatever. Um, sometimes I ordered some things that were less common. Mm. And so, you know, I saw that as a downside. I continued doing it though, after COVID was done at the house, probably for another six months because I just didn't feel safe going Mm. out. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I would say if, things worsened COVID wise, again, I would immediately go back to it and I would spend the money to tip and pay the delivery fee because to me it was worth it versus the exposure to our health. So let me ask you about the tipping part because that's an interesting point. I had not done this before, but I hadn't thought about that point. And you're, you're right. You do need to tip them. So you're, when you pay for it, there's a tip option for the person that's selecting the food for you. Right. But that's not the same person that's delivering it. No, it is the same person. Oh, it is. So you, you, when you get to the paying part... Um, you're paying for the groceries, so you see the total of everything. You also see a complete list of everything that you ordered mm-hmm. and how much they cost. So if you feel that, oh, I really, you know, I'm going to have to substitute fennel bulbs for broccoli because broccoli was much less expensive or whatever it is, you can do that. And you can do it up and while they're even shopping if mm. you change your mind. As long as they haven't paid yet, you can change your mind, which oh, wow. is great. Wow. But Um, there's a delivery fee that's automatic and then there's the tip and the tip has like four different options. They automatically check one box and then you have the option to change the tip to a higher level. Okay. And I always did that because, you know, they needed to make a living. And so I it's felt. the same person that's doing the selecting that delivers to yes. you. Yes. So that was another question that I, I was thinking because I see this truck that runs around, you know, Peapod on it. What I wasn't sure is do they have like a hundred different deliveries on that same truck? And is are your refrigerated items now getting warm while you know, are you at the end of the route or are they just going they've they've gotten your items now they're delivering them directly to you and then they'll go back to the store how does that so i don't know all the details i can tell you that when people delivered things to me it was in their own car oh okay so it wasn't in the truck with a label on it it was just an individual's car that's interesting so um I'm not sure how that all was works. It, was it always the same person or no. is it always different? No, people? because I did two different stores. Okay, right. So it was where I felt, you know, there's certain things I can only get at one store. Yeah, and then, sure. Yeah, certain things at another store. So, but to be honest, in, in a bind, I would do it again. Right. So. And I think what people have to also recognize is while you're paying a delivery charge, that's what you'd be paying in gasoline. Absolutely. And when you're looking now, I think, what did I just pay? 
you know, gas right now is what five, I mean, three sixty a gallon or something like that. Right. Um, it adds up. It does add up. By the time you up. get downtown, you're idling, and you know you're using a couple of gallons. That you're probably spending right. ten dollars in gas just getting to and from home, depending on where you're going. And, and your time is valuable. So sure. you know, if you have a lot going on. Uh, for a few days or a week, there's nothing wrong with getting a little help. Right. So. And if you're concerned for your health right, and you don't want to be in public, and that is a very real concern. It Even is. Even now, as right. I'm listening to the news, and we've got three different, we got flu going on, there's this other respiratory thing. RSV, we're still, yeah. And we've still got this COVID variant that's right. floating around. Yeah, and if you're comp- you know, immune compromised or you have health issues, you need to really be thinking about uh, your health on that. So that is a great point, uh, but certainly something that people should research. That's, I, I'm going to think about that myself. Well, you know, what, let's see. You've got other items there. You brought some other show-and-tell items. You've yeah. got – what's this planet oat? Okay, so um, milk – is delicious milk is used in a lot of cooking and um milk can go bad right right. and if you're a senior and you're living alone it's hard to have milk around the house and worry about it going bad Mm -hmm. right because you can't get through it so these are two examples of what's called shelf stable milk now Oh, okay. We do non-dairy milks at our house, so that's why I have these. But you can also get shelf-stable cow's milk. Uh, Parmalat is, a, I believe, the brand that is available here. And so, number one, they're small. Number two, you can keep them on the shelf until you open them. They don't have to be in the fridge. Um, so I find them to be very convenient because... This way I'm not running out to the store to buy one or two <laughs> things because I've got a few of these in the closet. Yeah, sure. Um, so I find them super helpful. And, um, you know, if you don't do this, I, I do want to point out, and nobody does it, but you can freeze milk. Um, mm. I would, if you're a senior and there's one of you at home or two of you, you can take an ice cube tray, fill it with milk, make Is milk ice right? cubes. Once they're frozen, take them out of the, can, the ice cube tray, throw them in a Ziploc bag. So if you need a half a cup of milk, you just defrost two ice cubes. And they taste the same? They taste the same. I wouldn't freeze an entire container. I've done that. And it takes forever to melt because you don't want to ever melt it in the microwave. It has to melt overnight oh, in the naturally. fridge. Okay. Um, but that stuff takes like three days to defrost. Oh, wow. um, and by the time it's defrosted, whatever I right. cooked was long gone. Yeah, right. You know, right. Um, I also brought um, tuna. I'm a huge fan of tuna. Yeah, I we personally we are don't too. eat it, right. but we eat it at the house. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm mostly vegetarian. Um, but tuna is. Seems expensive to people because you're you're getting a can and and I get a lot of complaints. Tuna costs too much, but if you compare um, tuna to you know other meats that you can get, first of all, this will extend a meal. It provides protein mm. and it really is a nice heart healthy fat mm. product. So it's it's not a bad thing to to invest in and have a few cans at home. Mm-hmm. We always have a few cans at yeah, the house. Yeah, we do too. Right. You know, um, and so I, I do recommend getting it packed in water instead That's of what we use oil. Water, right. And for people who are concerned about the mercury level, um, the white albacore tuna is significantly lower in um, mercury than the dark meat ones. Wow. So, you know, it, but if you're only having tuna a couple times a week, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. It, it was if you were eating it every single day sure. and other fish that it would be a problem. And the last thing I brought is a grain called quinoa. Okay. Quinoa is a grain that cooks up similar to rice, but it is a good source of protein. So if you're going to have a plant-based meal to try and save a little money, um, one meal a week, uh, this would be a great substitute, especially if you don't want to do dry peas and beans, hmm. because this gives you whole grains, it gives you fiber, and it also gives you protein. So a quinoa is a nice choice uh, for people. Yeah. And I think that covers my you've, entire... you've got your whole shopping list right yes. there. Yes. 
Jen, I have to say, you have been a fascinating guest today. I've learned yeah. a lot myself, and I hope that our viewers have learned an awful lot about how to shop healthy, shop cheaper, shop smarter, and to ensure that they still have a great um, food food uh, food choices in their homes. Um, are there? I know that you had come up with a whole action step, a bunch of action steps uh, for keeping your food budget in line. I think we've covered a lot of that. Is there anything that you see that we haven't covered that you would like to just um, share before we wrap up here? Um, yeah. How about just a couple of things? Um, one is go home and see what you got because people tend That's a good to. Point, right. And I'm as guilty as everybody else. There is so much stuff at my house, and I don't know what's in the inventory. Oh, so, I am so guilty of that. Anne says, yeah. we've already got five of those. Right. So before you go out the door, maybe every week, you know, do right. I really need this right. or do I have it already? Because right. if you have it already, you're going to save yourself some money. Um, so that's important. I downsized from a chest freezer to... Uh, I got rid of the chest freezer, right. and now we just have a side-by-side fridge-freezer sure. combo because things would just get lost in the deep pit of the chest freezer, yeah, and I wasted a lot there. of food. Right. So make sure you know what you've got. Um, that, I think, is important. Another thing is if you're out running errands and you're shopping and doing all that kind of stuff, bring a snack. Mm. because we tend to spend more money <laughs> buying ready-made stuff out. Right. Um, you know, it's so much less expensive to bring that, your seasonal right. apple or, um, sure. you know, a baggie of carrots than to buy the one item uh, off the shelf by the register that tends to be not nutritious. Mm -hmm. We'll call it. Um, high fat, high sugar, you know, usually mm -hmm. candy and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so bring snacks with you. And I am a huge fan. Reusable water bottles. Oh, okay. One of the biggest, I believe, um, money wasters is buying bottles of water. Oh, I know. Plastic bottles of water that I are agree. only going to ruin the environment. I agree. If you don't like the water you have at home, Buy something like a Brita with a filter and a reusable water bottle mm -hmm. and just refill that and stop spending, wasting your money on plastic bottles. You know, it is amazing to me, uh, and I forget when bottled water started showing up on the shelves, and I would think, really? We yeah. always walked out of a water faucet or, right. you know, or just taking it out of the tap away. You never bought bottled water like no, this. And you're no. right. The containers, you're just throwing them away. Tremendous trash issues right. with plastic. Right. But the cost of that. And then the other problem is how many times, and we tend to now, like if we're having gatherings of family, we buy the small bottles of water. Because if you buy the regular size that you get that people use, rarely ever, ever, ever do they drink the whole thing. Right. I'm throwing away... I'm emptying a half a bottle of water because they put it down. They forget where it was. They get confused. Is that somebody else's? If you use the little ones, probably far more efficient. And uh, I'd buy the two and a half gallon water jug and give everybody a glass. I love it. And that would save you. Um, or better than that, fill up a few pitchers of yeah, water I and just it. put glasses out. Um, the the more we can take care of the environment, I love it. The better we'll all be. I love but it. it's so much less expensive to buy one reusable water bottle and just refill it. Right. Yeah. Great. So, great. Great point. I think we covered everything else, Harry. Yeah. Well, Ginger Fune, I want to thank you for coming in. Our local registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, you have done a magnificent job Thank you. with the show today, showing off a lot of alternatives and choices that people can take advantage of. I certainly have learned a lot about, you know, don't be afraid to try different items, uh, eat healthy, buy in bulk, and then just repackage them into smaller items. Because generally, if you're looking at your per unit price, not always, as you pointed out, right. but generally you can find less expensive options. Store brand is cheaper, but 
it's the same food. Yep. So you can definitely save there. Definitely check out, uh, you know, expiration dates. Uh, try not to know what's in the refrigerator. Yeah. So you're not buying more of something and you get home and you say, oh, my gosh, I already had that. And it's a it, it's an expired item. And now I'm throwing away food that I didn't eat because I've got all this other stuff that I have. Definitely explore online shopping. That's an exciting option. And I think that for our seniors, you should definitely be looking at that. If you're concerned about going into the stores, if you don't have a vehicle, if transportation is a problem, even in the winter when it's cold, snowy, icy, right? Ice, online shopping is a great alternative. It is. You shouldn't be afraid to try it. You just do it on a computer or an iPad or a tablet. Right. I believe you have to use um, technology to do it. I don't think you can do it by phone. So that right. is, it, that might be a stumbling block for some people right. who don't use computers. Right. But if you can learn how especially when the weather's bad, I would rather pay that that <laughs> fee than risk slipping on the ice. Yeah, no question. And then the other item is the fact that prepared foods are higher in sodium, they have more fats, they're higher in calories, and generally they're more expensive than if you prepare them yourself. Yep. Uh, buy items in bulk, you know, you make extra, then just prepackage it. You can freeze it or you can store Absolutely. it for another meal. So we've learned a lot today, uh, and I just want to thank you so much for coming in. Um, you are a regular on Tina Gorman's show, so yeah. there will be more tips and and I, food items uh, that people can take advantage of. But uh, just want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in to WCPC Westfield Cable Channel 15 for another exciting edition of the Westfield Council on Aging Presents. I am your host, Terry Rock. I want to say thanks to P. Coles, our producer and chief engineer, for making this show possible, and to Tina Gorman, executive director of the Westfield Senior Center for really putting this entire series together as we continue to bring programs that are of interest, educational and informational to our population, our senior population in the greater Westfield area. Have a great day, everybody. Again, I'm Harry Rock, and we'll see you on the next show. Thanks.